So, Bill, what's yes. going on here? That's an observatory in the mountains of Chile, and uh, there's a team of astronomers in there that uh, using the telescope to scan the Kuiper Belt. They're looking for new objects in the Kuiper Belt. Kuiper Belt, you probably know, extends from the orbit of Neptune and out beyond another uh, 20 astronomical units, but a couple of billion miles. And they were specifically trying to find Planet Nine. Now, if you don't know about Planet Nine, this is this hypothetical planet, much more massive than Earth, that um, is one of the best explanations for some gravitational influences of other Kuiper Belt objects. So they were looking for that, but then Jupiter wandered into their field of view and they decided they would look at Jupiter while they're also looking at the Kuiper Belt. So uh, these are the Galilean moons that, that Galileo saw way back in the early 1600s, and they're very close to Jupiter and very big. Uh, well, here are actually a couple of the, uh, the uh, shots that they took of one of the objects, one of these, these moons that they discovered. There were 12 altogether, and they're, they're very small moons. They're, they're anywhere from one to three kilometers in diameter. So the biggest one is like, you know, roughly two miles across. And, you know, compare that to our moon, which is 2,000 miles across, roughly. And uh, so I've overlaid this so you can see the, the actual movement from one spot to another a little more closely there. That's, that's the same object uh, having moved. They'd had to do this over, a, like, the course of a whole year so that they could actually get the trajectories of these objects and make sure that they actually were orbiting Jupiter and not um, just sort of, you know, wandering asteroids that were just, you know, moving through. All right, so this is uh, where some of these were discovered. All of the, the, uh, the 12 moons that were discovered are uh, in boulder paths here, but they fall into a couple of different regions of moons. There's the prograde group and the retrograde group. Prograde group means that these are, are uh, moons that, that orbit uh, Jupiter kind of in the right direction. They orbit Jupiter the, in the same direction that Jupiter orbits the sun, for instance, or, or rotates on its axis. The retrograde group is the ones that go the wrong way. They're farther out, and they, they somehow go the opposite direction. The interesting thing about these, uh, these 12 is that there's this one that they're calling the oddball moon, uh, it's actually named Valetudo. I think it's on the next slide here. And it's in the retrograde group that go the wrong way, but it's going the right way. And that might lead you to believe that it, it uh, doesn't have long to live and that actually there are astronomers who would agree with you. It, it might actually uh, <coughs> you know, meet its demise at some point in the uh, sort of quasi-near future. Uh, this is uh, Jeff McKibben's uh, point of view. If the moons were actually motor scooters, this is exactly what they would look like. Um, and, and of course, his doge up there. We always have to have the doge in there somewhere. Anyway, so Jupiter has 12 new moons. It brings the total number of moons to 79. It is kicking Saturn's sorry rear end because Saturn is still back at 62. It's never going to catch up at this point, I don't think. And that's the news, 12 new moons for Jupiter. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to be your conclusion, Bill. <laughs> <laughs>